Uh-uh. Oh, girl, you, you always have to have a song in your head. Okay. Oh, you ready? Mm hmm I hope you're okay. I feel like I'm always saying the same thing, but yes, I generally do hope you're okay. So, I'm coming to you with some big, big, big announcement. I think it's big anyway. Um, I'm just gonna go and just put it out there. Yes, I'm just gonna go and put it out there. I am moving to South Africa. I moved in South Africa for two years. <laughs> Okay, so let me tell you the story of how this all came about. I'm going to tell you the, the short version. Call me for Or take me to coffee. Um, so, the short version of this is last year, 2013. Oh, my church. Chapel 100 Community Church. I love my church. Um, they surprised this youth with the amazing opportunity to go to South Africa for a mission trip. And um, this came about because our former youth leaders, Anton and Milana, yeah, that's family. Um, yes, moved out there. God called them out there. Um, well, he called them to Africa. That's that's another story, guys. Anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so we went out there to go visit them and see the work that they are doing. Um, I don't think I've ever fallen in love with a country before. I know I fall in love with shoes and bags. <laughs> I'm joking, but I've never fallen in love with a country before. But like, I was there for from day two. I was like, oh, I love this place. And if anyone knows me, um, I grew up in Ghana. I've lived in the UK for ten years, and um, it wasn't until that I moved to the UK that my heart grew for my country. In terms of um, when I was back home, I used to see the poverty and the kids living on the street and people living on the street and just the way things were. And I used to know, think like, okay, this is a normal, but no one really like addressed it or something that was talked about. So it was almost normal, you know? Um, but it was when I moved here to England and I was like, they go to school for free? What? I was just like, everything, I was just like, oh my gosh, there's so much wealth. And I, it just opened my eyes. I never looked at Ghana the same. And I was like, oh God, we have to go back. So my plan being in the UK was just like, Okay, I'm gonna study and do all this and then I can't wait to go back to Ghana and just see how we can serve, like see how we can serve my country. Um so yeah, so that's been my plan, literally stay here, go back home. So when I went to South Africa, I was just like <sighs> it was so weird because I could see myself being there for like a long time and I remember I was just staying like standing with God and just I think we're on the beach one day I was standing with God and I was just talking to him I was like God let's go everywhere let's go to all the nations and let's come back here and things like that and I was just like just talking to God and I'm sure he was sitting there smiling because little did I know that I was definitely gonna come back so it wasn't until I came back to England um, that I knew that I was definitely going I remember coming back um, while I was out there, I spoke to my youth leaders, we got into a conversation and they were catching up with me they're like, oh, what's going on, we haven't seen you in ages, uh, what's going on, and I told them how God has just broken my heart for human trafficking and trafficking. they said, and it's something that goes on a lot in where they live, and I was like, whoa, and they told me about this organisation that they started to work with. And so when I came back into the UK, I remember the name of the organisation, it was Justice Acts, and I was like, I was in the library procrastinating and um, I was like, trust this act, let's just dream about South Africa. And so uh, I was just like, oh, volunteer. And I was like, yes, I'm so excited. I'm going to go down for a summer and volunteer. So I click on the volunteering thing and it's like, maximum, minimum of two years. I'm like, there goes my dreams. I was so upset. I was like, oh my gosh, no, I really just wanted to go for summer and things like that. Anyway. And it was just something I couldn't shake off me, honestly. I just like, for a couple of weeks, I just kept dreaming about like, daydreaming, not like having dreams, but like daydreaming and thinking like, oh, I'd love to go and serve and work with Justice Acts. And so I was saying with my, uh, my friend, hi Felicia. She's right here. <laughs> I was saying with my best friend and I was like, Felly, oh, and I can't get South Africa off my mind. What should I do? She's like, let's pray. You know, and so I prayed about it and I just had such peace and I felt like God was saying like, yes, this is what I want to do. And I was like, oh, no way. 
Um, so yes, <laughs> this is, guys, I promise you, this is actually the short version. <laughs> Uh, but yes, and I'm so, 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 so excited just to be like blessed with this opportunity. In our world today, there are currently 30 million people in slavery. South Africa is ranked amongst the top 10 countries where slavery is at its worst. An estimate of 100,000 people are believed to be trafficked into the country for exploitation annually. During my time in South Africa, I'm going to be volunteering with two awesome organisations. One of these organisations is called ESCAPE. ESCAPE is the safe house for women who have been trafficked. ESCAPE works to provide safety to young women who are victims of human trafficking and sexual exploitation. I will be working with the team at ESCAPE as an advocate for these young women, working to empower them and equip them with skills to help reintegrate them back into their communities. I will also be working with the Zozo Foundation who I spent my last mission trip with. The Zozo Foundation is based in the heart of a community of 40,000 people. In a community rich with gangsterism, abuse and poverty, the Zozo Foundation has found a way to bring hope to individuals. With food security being a major concern out in the community, Zozo Foundation has developed a project called Zozo Eden. Zozo Eden, through their six-month vegetable program, equips individuals with the skills for home gardening to aid with food security. Hi Arlene, this is my friend Arlene showing me the Zozo Education Centre on my last trip. With their education centre, they are able to provide a safe environment for secondary learners to receive academic assistance. Now onto a personal favourite of mine, the Zozo Boutique. The Sozo Boutique is a project developed by the Sozo Foundation. The Sozo Boutique works to uplift the physical environment of these vulnerable families by restoring essential living conditions. These projects have such an amazing impact on the lives of people and I've had the absolute pleasure of being able to witness this. Okay guys, so I'm off from the 27th of July, which is coming up real close. So I'm going on a purely voluntary basis, so I have a couple of fundraising ideas lined up. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that, so please don't ignore me when I message and post up links and stuff like that. Um, um, so I'm going to have a page where you can donate, I'll put the links on the end of the video. So yes, that'll be very, 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 very much appreciated as, as well, um, not just for myself, um, but the organisations that I've shared with you, and yes, that'll be really, really, really appreciated. Um, Oh, and also, I really want to use this opportunity to thank um, my family and my friends and my church community. Why do I feel like I'm going to tear up? Honestly, like, ah, I'm so, 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 so grateful. I, I have this quote that I read, um, and it says, there are two gifts we should give our children. One is roots and the other is wings. And honestly, like... That's how I've been raised. I'm so grateful for my um, my church community, especially because I remember I was speaking to my youth pastor when um, I prayed from God and I heard from him about me going out there. And then she was just like, uh, "Steve, I feel like God's saying that she goes to South Africa." He looked at me, he's like, "Sweet." <laughs> and I was just like, oh. "I don't know. I love that so much because just that's just the environment I've grown up in. Like, just allowed to just." grow in Christ and um, go with the things that he laid on our hearts and we've always been given that freedom and we've always been back like 100% you know and I'm so so grateful literally he was like sweet we'll sort it out I'll call the guys out there we'll sort something out don't worry and literally a few weeks he came back to me he's like yes sort it out you're ready to come just like <laughs> um, so I'm so so grateful literally 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 um, for for yeah, my church family and my family, oh my mom and dad, I'm so grateful. And to my friends. Okay, this thing is getting really long. I'm gonna go now.